Alright, so... Opponent uh, just flashes in a Snapcaster Mage with no legal targets uh, during our end step to, I guess, utilize his mana better. He can, like, Scarab God and then not do much. Like, if he hits his land drop, he can Ice Fang Quaddle. I think we're just in, like, a very, very good spot here. We also have a million billion mana. Let's block, let's get our Chalice of the Void to hand. Always yield. All that good stuff going on right now. Opponent's on two life and just I'm pretty sure he can't do much here. What are we missing? Plant? Sure, we'll get another plant. Alright. Opponent, do what you want. Take that chalice of the void. You got it, baby. I can't even take that. It only, only takes creatures cards. Okay. Sure. What's he doing? Going after mine now? Wilderness Reclamation. I don't really see a reason to pop this expedition map. <clears throat> Natty draw blast line. All right, so power plant. Chalice of the void for four, do we reckon, or for two? Let's just go to attacks and look to play Chalice afterwards, I think. Because we can always play it on 5 and block the Scarab God. Cycles Triome. And concedes. Alright, we get our first win with our Drazitron. Good stuff, team. Let's go. All right, let's get into that next match as well. All right, here we are for match number two, everyone. Um, we're versing Talk to BK. Who has won the die roll, so we're gonna be on the draw here. They are a Lurus deck. Ran into Kai's Gal for a first time while playing Bogles the other day. Got lucky though, and you pulled off the 2 0 win. Nice work, man. That's not an easy matchup to uh to get the victory in, so good job, man. Uh this hand seems good. I'm gonna keep. We have like a turn one, a turn two. And then, like, we can make decisions on what we're doing, on whether or not we hit a second Tron land. And then, I guess if we cast all his dust against a Lurus deck, we'll probably just win. Oh, it's the red-white version as well. We could just die on turn two here. He didn't hold Misha's bubble for a free trigger, though. All right, we'll go map pass. I 
And yeah, we, we could literally just be dead to this thing. Misha's Bobble. Oh, Misha's Bobble doesn't trigger Magecraft. That's right. It's only instants and sorcerers. So he's effectively down a card if he wants to try and go off here. Did he miss a land drop? Did our opponents just miss a land drop? That's really good for us if he did. Made me realize why Cartouche is so good. Do you think Dried Arbor is really that good anymore? I mean, I don't think Dried Arbor is very good. I don't even think Core Spirit Dancer is very good. I think um, the thing that makes Dried Arbor good at the moment is the fact that it helps you play around Kaya's Guile, and Kaya's Guile is pretty massive, so... Mmm... I wouldn't say yet yeah, that it's the most powerful thing though. All right, so opponent hits land drop. That's super lame. Hopefully he staggers this in a way where we can just get our warping whale. Although with that mutagenic growth, it might be hard. I guess if he taps out, we can make a scion and chump lock. Hmm. Dried Arbor is instant speed sack dodge. Yeah, exactly. Rossen. Ross Nern. Norn. Okay. I will literally take one damage if that's all the damage you want to deal to me, opponent. I think Dried Arbor is like a creature to go in on is like really gone down significantly as a viable way to win a game though. Like back in the day it used to be viable to win games off of. Now it's just not. You're like extremely lucky if you win off it or you recover from like a board, board sweeper effect with like your opponent on three or five life and then you just get your rancor back and kill them. Um... So yeah, it's not not the best. New Boros Burn prowess is uh, yeah pretty crazy fast. Yeah, it killed me on turn two the other day. Um, I was playing Burgles and on the play and had like Ethereal Armor plus Sentinel's Eyes on turn on my creature on turn two. Attack for four. I can't really block because I don't have Totem Armor at that point. Um, and then he turn two killed me, and I'm sitting there with Daybreak in hand. Super sad. Opponent uh, deciding whether or not... Oh, they've lost connection. Oh, no. Not like this, people. Not like this. <laughs> Rippity dip. I wonder what, like, these Boros deck configurations are even at the moment with, like, whatever is optimal. Um, let me just have a quick look-see. Oh, is my opponent back? My opponent is back. What happened? All right, tap out for some other effect, and I'm gonna just one mana chump lock or something. No. Weird. Um, not really sure what I want to do here. I think I Warping Whale, Exile the Soul Scout Mage. Then next turn I can Walking Ballista, pop the Luma Mancer. And... Alright, if he didn't save Soul Scout Mage, I'm going to say that makes us happy.
Can like block sack, but that's like just way too fancy in my opinion. I think we just want to go for the free kill. Cool. Alright, now we just have to deal with one swift spare. Pretty crazy fast when it wants to be. Dreadhorde Arcanist. Alright, he's up turbo. That's really frustrating. <laughs> Alright, we'll uh we'll take some damage. Natty land. No natural land. Lame. Two cards left in my opponent's hand. Um Suck this one. Let's get Eldrazi Temple. We'll play Eldrazi Temple for turn. I think we Warping Whale the Dreadhorde Arcanist or the... No, the Swiss Spear, surely. You may cast target Instant or Sorcery with mana value less than or equal to its power from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. So it's only instants or sorceries, and they can only get back mutagenic growth at this point. Sure. So either they're going to spend a spell saving the Swiss Spear here, which they do. Lightning Bolt Ars. Oh, that just means we're dead. Okay, never mind. Maybe I rushed that. Felt like we were in an okay spot, but having to pay mana to crack for land really puts us behind, in my opinion. Otherwise, we can matter reshaper and warping whale if we just naturally draw the land. So here they're gonna attack for what, like six? Seven? I guess lightning bolt, so that's technically eight damage that we're taking, right? Cool. Yeah, well, that was just like a little bit slow and clunky, unfortunately. Mm, okay, so is there anything we want to bring in here? We can like tutor for a lot with Khan the Great Crater. It's just about surviving those early turns, right? We probably want to bring in Spatial Contortion, actually. Then like... Remove Mindstone, Maze Mind Tome and Mindstone, or Maze Mind Tome Dismember. Dismember is still kind of nice though. We do have Chalice of the Voids on one. Alright, let's get rid of Mindstone. Feels like people are still trying to figure out the rest of the deck. Everyone knows they what that they want to play instance, but they don't know. If they drop Mishra's Bobble yet, Red Do goes pop, yeah. Red bopped off, bopped us in the nose. Um, yeah, I, I don't know about Mishra's Bobble in the deck, because obviously it's good with their other prowess creatures, but it's not good with the two white editions of Lumamancer and the two drop. Um, at the end of the day... It's not like they have a shortage of good red instant spells to cast, really. Like, there's plenty of good red instants, right? It's just whether or not they want to sacrifice the bauble for the Luris. And, like, I, I don't know if it's worth bauble just for Luris. It lines up with your prowess creatures, but I don't know. It doesn't seem super good to me. If you drew a card in the same turn, it would be busted and you'd just play it. Yeah, definitely is still being tinkered with. Someone will probably figure out how to make it degenerate. I mean, <laughs> more, more consistently degenerate is probably the argument, Gear Bear. <laughs> All right. So we have like Trod Manor into Ugin Reality Smasher. I mean, I guess we're supposed to keep this. 
<clears throat> Watch us get next leveled with the Blood Moon. All right, comes to Misha's bubble. Before playing a single land down, they are looking at the top of our library. I wonder why. Surely you just play one drop and say go, or are you guessing whether or not you want to gamble on the Lumamancer? Now they're looking at their library. Right. So they saw the Warping Whale. Alright, well this puts us at a pretty commanding point in the game. We can literally, like, Uga next turn holding up Warping Whale. Seems pretty good. <laughs> Figuring out if they want to scoop. I mean, we're on Eldrazi Tron, they probably want to scoop. Gonna try and play around the warping whale with a creature. Manomorphos. Is he randomly like splashing blue for the uh, Stormwing entity? No, he goes red white. He's just playing the two drop. Are we versing Storm all of a sudden? What's going on? Did they just transition sideboard into white, red white storm right now? Ah, uh, that moment when Manamorphos doesn't just win them the game when they're just doing whatever they're doing this turn. Soul Scour Mage, yes sir. Clever Lumamancer, also yes sir. Feel like unconditionally removing the Lumamats is better than gambling leading for the Warping Whale here. Then we can Ugin plus Warping Whale anyway. Alright, so we need plant this time. Get the plant. More Tron Lance. Wonder if we want to like warping whale now or later. I guess we just go for it now. What do you mean? Pay it costs one less to cast. What do you mean? Doesn't it cost two? Did I just mess up? Okay, I messed up. I should have done it with mana on the mana pool. Big damn incoming. I mean, they're probably going to kill us still. <laughs> um, apparently, I only get the mana off that's not colorless mana. Or that's not like forced colorless mana here. It seems weird. I can sort of see why it works that way, but it also seems a bit odd. I'm not sure if they can beat a Reality Smasher though, so fingers crossed. Alright, goodbye Egan. You served us well, we probably should have saved you, but here we are. Doesn't reduce the must be colorless, yeah, that's sort of what I figured, even though it seems a bit odd. Alright, more Tron land. Let's go. Let's start this clock. <laughs> wow! It's path 
uh, warping while they're at Soul Scale Mage while they path our reality smasher. We're still at a very high life total. We just need to draw some BS card and then we'll be fine. So they mutagenic growth to save it here. That does save us three damage though. So I think we're all right with that exchange. <laughs> all right, time to top deck something which is not mana. Come on deck, let's go. Path to Exile, OP, OP. Opponent discarding the crash through as well. <laughs> You're just taking the free crash through on the draw? Yeah, that seems correct. I appreciate that line. All right. It's not too much damage. What a card. <laughs> I mean, it's fine if we actually top deck well and like, here we are, top decking well. Probably just pop this on attack step. I don't know if I care about the Soul Scale Mage more or the Dreadhold Arcanist. I think I care about the Soul Scale Mage more. We can get all these card draw stuff back from the graveyard, which is sort of frustrating, though. <clears throat> so, do you guys reckon there's an archetype that's going to pick up the green instant speed crash through? Or is that me just, like, having my wishful thinking? I think that card looks really sweet and really powerful. Damn, he's refilling his hands so fast here. Or do we just like wait it out because our opponent's gonna be incentivized not to play any other creatures if we leave Blast Zone on the battlefield? I think we just wait it out. Our life total is still pretty high. Yeah, see, we get we get a Loom Amatsu here as well now. All that. <laughs> this deck, am I right? Like, holy shit, this is so cancer. Four mana. Can the Great Creator. Can they beat a worm coil engine? I guess they technically can. All right, what do we want here? Ensnaring Bridge seems pretty good as long as they don't have a way to destroy it. They probably boarded it in though. I think the safer line is Walking Ballista just blow everything up because we have Six. We can get four counters and kill almost everything. <clears throat> mm. We also have, like, a lot of land in hand here. We can only reduce our... Hand count to two this turn. What's Mystic Forge do? Top card of your library in your turn. Mm. All right, let's just do the bridge line. We still have Blast Zone to help us be like BS, so. What card? There's a Nihiland drop deck. They might run it. Um, 
I honestly don't remember the name of the card. Uh, let me look it up for you quickly. Of course they got the revoke existence. I fucking called it, man. Um. I fucking called it. I knew it, man. They just weren't emptying their hand fast enough. Are you kidding me? Uh no. Mythic spoiler, why do you gotta do me like this? I don't want hour of devastation. No one wants hour of devastation. Alright, when all these uh things load, I'll just um bring it back up. White is coming in clutch for the deck with this matchup. Path and Revoke Existence. I mean, they've both been pretty good. It's definitely helped them get there. So here they're probably going to intentionally make us pop. Uh, it's called Charge Through. So uh, let's just go like this. There we go. There's the card. There's the green one. Literally a functional reprint, print, but with instant speed um, and green color instead of uh, everything else. Goes after the mutagenic growth. Sure. Dreadheart Arcanist seems really powerful in this dead. I'm not going to lie. Alright, I think we still pop Blast Zone here. Apparently we need to... Oh, yep. Pay some extra mana. You got it, opponent. Alright, so Khan goes down, at least it took some creatures with them. This Dreadheart Arcanist is just doing a lot of work, though. And because they've got Revoke Existence in the graveyard, it can continue to be really strong. <clears throat> I knew I wanted Walking Ballista. Super frustrating. Strixhaven has, like, brought a lot of power level. I wonder, like, what other decks are going to pop up. Why is he targeting Path? Because he doesn't want to cast it? I guess so. Alright, now we just need to do that BS Eldrazi thing and just rip something that's not land off the top, right? To be really good. It only really hits one creature though, so you guess Naya Zoo wouldn't play it. Oh yeah, it is target creature. Hmm. That's a fair point. Like maybe Infect, but like Infect is probably in a pretty good space anyway. Lurus, get back Luthermancer. Uh. <clears throat> Alright, what I wouldn't give for a giant walking ballista this time. I really missed that keyword in Rostrum. It's a very good point. Wah, wah, wah. Chalice on one, right? Mm -mm. 
Actually, this is just wrong, right? Why is he mutagenic growth to the grave then? Does this get past Chalice? It's still a cast effect, it shouldn't go through Chalice. Beautiful Seb McKinnon art on that Chalice, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty nice artwork. I reckon it's my favourite artwork out of the Chalice of the Voids. Supposed to be like OG version. This is the um judge promo, right? I just don't think I can beat my opponent here. Dreadheart Ar Arcanist was literally just way too good this game. Because it went grindy. It's just way too good. So we're on 12. He can currently attack for 6. He gets a trigger off the Dreadheart Arcanist. He can get back Mana Morphos and he can maybe get some extra triggers. Um, or I could revoke existence on the chalice and then, yeah, I just got to play the chalice on two. This is like really stupid value from me. <clears throat> you want to see if someone can make dragon's approach deck that's consistent. What's, uh, what's dragon's approach? Oh, Dragon's Approach, gotcha. Uh, holy crap -o. All right. Well, this is the sort of nonsense that normally happens against me when my opponent's on Eldrazi Tron. Deals three damage to each opponent. You may exile it. Four other cards named Dragon's Approach from your graveyard if you do such your life. Yeah, I think the problem is it costs three mana. I think if you did it at two mana, it would be pretty good potentially, but... Some, some kind of self mill. Could be onto something. Get rid of mutagenic growth. Alright. We stabilized on two life, people. Holy crap. I think we want to leave Thought Knots here back on defense. <clears throat> For a turn, in case they've got a prowess creature plus a burn spell that gets counted. <clears throat> All right, so we put our opponent to eight. Opponent concedes. Oh, wow. So we were, like, so dead there and then just bullshitted it with all his dust. What a deck, people. What a deck. <laughs> oh, that is so stupid. All right, let's get into the uh, decider game now. Mm-mm. <clears throat> Is there, like, a card that would make casting dragons approach cheaper as well? So, like... Like the storm creatures, maybe? Because you've got Boral and Goblin Electromancer, which could make it cost less to cast. I don't see where you're ever putting enough in your graveyard that you want it, though. You probably just want to be on Storm. <laughs> It's just dumb until your opponent um, names a card that stops you from casting it. <laughs> Alright, so Walking Ballista. Yeah, this has got to be good. Get it ready for that uh, turn 2 kill. 
We've got double Odrazi Temple now? Ooh. Ooh, I don't mind that. Triple Swift Spear. Yikes. Uh, we might just be dead next turn. Thought Not Seer is a very good top deck, though. Let's go ahead and cast it. The deck would be instantly employed to Surgical Extraction. Yeah, a little bit. So Manomorphos can, like, miss, right? So we just take the Lightning Bolt. Surely. And that way you can't double Lightning Bolt our Thought Nonce here before um, attacks. <clears throat> Mill would be the deck's worst matchup. <laughs> All right, random revoke his existence. He hit his land as well, so here's going to be the lightning bolt too. I think we've got to block the Swiss Spear or we're dead, right? Because that goes to 12, 15. We'd be slightly alive. It's just worth It's just worth the block here. All right. My internet's running a bit slow at this point, so yeah. All right, cool. So is my bit rate's okay. I'm very confused. Um, one card left in opponent's hand. It's an unknown. I don't see how we're winning if we don't block with the matter reshaper, right? Because we're still dead to prowess triggers. I really would have preferred to have not lost our expedition map. That feels really bad. Maybe Matter Reshaper can get us a Tron land and then we can naturally draw the other Tron land off the top of our library and then get Ensnaring Bridge. All right, round of Misha's Bauble. Triple Swiss Spear, yeah. Triple Spig Swiss Spear is a big oof. And hardcast light up the stage. GG, I guess. What was our uh, trigger? Cool. Wait, I didn't get my trigger? Where's my trigger? I want to see my card. Come on, Magic Online. Uh, expedition map. Okay. Rip. I don't think the hand was particularly bad. I don't know. I was never going to keep up with the super fast hand, so I suppose. Are there any decks that would benefit from having less than 60 cards? You could Surgical Extraction your own Dragon's Approach and instantly have a 40 card deck? Um, I suppose so. But then you're talking about um, running probably four surgical extractions as well. Oh, we found our opponent. Last second join. I think it's probably just a bit janky. So, match number three. Lost the Daryl again. Opponent on the play versus Sarkin the Bad. Says my opponent is currently 0-0. And we're going to go ahead and keep. All 
All right, let's see uh, how much work these matter reshapers can do. I think I just look to assemble Tron Mana here. I think that's fine. You could play Red Blue Thassa's Oracle Suicide deck. That's an idea. You'd still need to have some way to get rid of your surgical extractions though. But you could Mana Morphos too. All right, so we need tower. Let's get tower. Triple matter reshaper. See what the response is to the first one. It's nothing. Okay. See what the response is to the second one. Remands the second one. Sure. Some sort of blue moon deck, or is it like the Jeskai thing that's running the Prismari Omen? Prismari Omen is like getting heaps of play right. Oh, he's got Breeding Pole. Teamer. <laughs> We're just drawing like stupidly well with our lands, I think. Uh... All right, so we get in for three. Seems fine. Play a matter reshaper. Play another one. Triple matter reshaper. Team of control. I mean, like he's cast nothing this game. <laughs> If Splinter Twin was legal, I'd say it was a Splinter Twin deck that was running the Bounding Crisis. Um, sure. We'll ballist it a hand there. God, it is busted that I can decide that zero mana cards go to hand. Instead of on the battlefield. That is so dumb. Mono Romantima. <laughs> Could also play Jace Wilder of Mysteries. Yeah, Jace Wilder of Mysteries is a strong card. Let's play our Maze Mind Time. We can start scrying and doing stuff soon. Um, I don't feel pressured to walking ballista. We can like just wait on that until they're tapped out. Like maybe they go for a board sweeper effect. Like I suppose Blood Moon could be okay against us as well. He's gonna switch himself off green if he does that though. <clears throat> Surely he's got the Hooting Mandrills. Why else would you be playing green in a deck like this? Okay. Amrakul. All right, so sack one, two, three, four, five, six. Keep Tron Mana and kill them with Walking Ballista. 
Battlefield. Warping Wild Hand, cool. All right. I feel okay about this. I think. X is currently four. Sounds good to me. All right, we can kill him on our next attack, maybe. Maybe. We're dead to bolt, snap, bolt. Opponent concedes. Sweet. All right, literally all he had was an Emrakul hand. Um, all right, can we do anything against Through the Rage? They probably got like the Dwarven Mine and the whole Polymorph thing as well, right? I would assume. The deck actually has like 12 enablers as long as they hit Dwarven Mine. That's pretty terrifying. Um, GG's though, I guess, on the first one. Uh. I'm not sure we want Dismember. Warping Whale could still be okay. Let's bring in Sorcerer's Spyglass and Relic. Or is Warping Whale just bad? Do we want to tutor Graph Digger's Cage or do we want to just like hard cast it? Alright, whatever, something like that. So we can very easily get Tron Mana, but we don't have much to do with it if we do. We have Interaction of Sorcerer's Spyglass. We have Maze My Tome, which can give us scries and stuff. I think we keep. This could be me getting all greedy and all that. So, like, here's my big question. Is, like, the general consensus against Tron decks is to destroy the Tron land they put down last. So... Does anyone ever next level that by playing like the duplicate land um, second instead of first? Because everyone just in from what I've seen just just plays the play plays it the same way. Like you don't ever keep your opponent guessing, right? So if I had two mines here, um, if I played mine first, that would sort of represent that I have two mines, right, instead of one. But yeah, then if you play the tower first and the mine second, they destroy the mine, you've got one in hand. Like, I don't know, it seems it seems like something people should think about, right? Bridge is legit with Khan? Yeah, no joke. I love the idea of bridge here. Although they have like Prismario men that can just destroy a bridge, unfortunately. Do I spy glass here instead of going bridge? Uh tapping the wrong land here. Let's tap this one. I, I sort of think just jamming the bridge is wrong because they can have interaction for it. And I can always name the treasure so that they can't activate the treasure for mana. So they're probably getting Dwarven Mine. No, they didn't have a Mountain Fetch. So they can't get Dwarven Mine there. 
So they have Through the Breach and Emrakul, and they have the Schooling hat Tarn in hand. They have an Opt there. Okay. Can I just name Treasure? I can't just name Treasure. Are you kidding me? Oh, this feels bad. I can name Scalding Tarn, actually. <clears throat> Anything in my sideboard that I would want here? That's still a card name. I can card for... Yeah, I can can't hit for Pithing Needle, actually. It's for uh, Graph Digger's Cage. Wait, creature cards can't enter from graveyards and libraries, so that doesn't stop it from entering from the hand, actually. It's a token, yeah. I'm feeling pretty bad about that whole token thing. If I play Khan, though, they can't activate the token as well. So we'll lock them twice here. All right, let's go for Khan. Is there anything we want to get? Just liquid metal coating? Yeah, I think we just go after liquid metal coating here. Then we can start stripping our opponent's lands from next turn. Cool. Alright, John, how you going, my man? Welcome back. So, that took me longer than it should have, but I think we navigated that successfully. I drew the uh, island as well. But Treasure is no good against Khan. So we should have a lock in, right? Draws more Tron mana, sure. Remand, uh, yeah, whatever. That did target his land, right? Wait, what? Why didn't that work? Oh, whatever. Why didn't that work? Now I have to stop. put a stop on my opponent's upkeep before he can play a land. That seems really weird. Oh, do I have to liquid metal coating first and then plus? Okay, I think I did it backwards. Alright, we're getting there. All right, I'll play Chalice on two. That shuts off my Maze Mind time. Okay, I did this backwards. Okay, whatever. We'll just leave the time in hand. I, I'm uh, I'm messing everything up. Yeah, I did tick up the Khan. I wasted it on the Steam Vents before I activated the Liquid Metal Coating. Playing like I want to throw the game. Mm -mm. 
All right. Uh, with that, we pass. And I guess hopefully he doesn't hit a land that isn't Scalding Ton. Um, yeah, big oof. Opponent concedes. Okay, well, we tried our best to throw that, but we got, like, very lucky at the same time. Woof. OP deck OP. Oh, we find our next opponent already. All right, match number four. Won the die roll against Mash Milofsky versus this guy before. Um, hand just doesn't do anything. Sand seems better. I'm gonna keep and ditch Nugan when we can get into it. So. No real reason not to run on Tron land first. Uh, remove that stop. Sort of pointless at this point. Chalice of the Void. wonder if I want to cast that before the sh Reshaper. Um, my opponent's on Dredge. This is bad. If he's on something like Jund... What Jun deck isn't playing Lurus and Shadow at the moment, though? Alright, let's uh, cast Reshaper. Chalice wins games. What's the matchup? I'm not sure yet, Pirate John. Ah, it's Scape Shift. Okay. It's the old Titan Shift. We drew the uh, next Tron piece, so we... Is there like a one drop we want to stop here? Like potentially Lightning Bolt? I mean, that doesn't really do much. We're just better off going for a Chalice on two, right? Next turn. Shuts off like Farseek and Tribe Scouts. Actually, we can we can go Chalice on four. How do they beat Chalice on four? He tribe scouted there instead of like a Dryad of Elysian Grove. Chalice on zero. Oh, sorry guys, I didn't see that. For the Sumners Pact. Yeah, that's true. I think I've got another one in the sideboard. Or do I? Do I not have Chalice of the Void in the sideboard? That seems wrong. <laughs> Alright, we'll play Chalice on zero. Uh, we'll play Ugin. And then we should be able to play Khan as well, right? So something in our sideboard we want still. Uh, like, we can get Witchbane Orb as well. No Chalice in the board. Yeah, well, we had one in hand, which is probably good enough, right? Probably just Liquid Metal Coating, so we can minus now and then start stripping away his lands and he shouldn't be able to win. All right, let's yield to his upkeep. We'll disable the stomping ground. This deck has got some serious power to it, man. It's so obnoxious. Try out of Lysian Grove, sure. Guess what creature's gonna die next turn. All right, that's all really straightforward.
Might be Valky Shift deck, no Titans. Uh, they, they'll have the Titans, they just haven't found them yet. It's just, um, it's just Titan Shift. Is Valky Shift, is, does that run Valky as well? Rip Ugin. Wow, great draw. All right. All right, juicy thought not sir, and then we can make up our mind on what we're doing next. Quad primeval titan and acid moss. Opponent concedes. Oof. <laughs> yeah, Valky god of lies. Okay. Yeah, I think it's just I think it's just straight titan shift. Big off off the top of our library with that thought not sir then. That was huge. Main deck acid moss. Yikes. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. So surely we want like main deck sorcerer spyglass or pithing needle to help play around um our opponent Steve's, right? <laughs> Just regular Titan shift, get rolled. <laughs> Yeah, man, it's not broken enough for today's modern meta game, right? You need something way, uh, way stronger. I think Dismember and Maze Mind fine. I'm not sure what Warping Whale is achieving. It counters Scapeshift, though. Okay, Warping Whale is fine. So I bought out one Chalice of the Void, so I can tutor for it, potentially. I guess it technically gives us three more copies, and we're not, like, pressured to play it on turn one or anything. Uh, is there anything else in our sideboard that we think we'd want? Don't really think so. All right, let's just... Oh, wait, we want Spatial Contortion. What am I doing? No! All right. New player. Report me. We have two Tron lands. We have a Chalice. We can Chalice on zero. Ballista, Smasher. Yeah, this is, like, kind of slow. I don't know if we're supposed to keep this or not. Opponent keeping the seven. All right, let's risk it for the biscuit. Mm -hmm. Oof. All right, let's do let's do the trick. Let's play the tower first and the mine second. And then we can play around our opponent's um, Acid Moss this way. <laughs> For the Biscuit. That is the one. Alright, turn too far, seek. What are we drawing? Ugin. I don't think we want a walking ballista yet. I don't think we need a chalice of the void yet on zero. I think we just play patiently and chalice next turn. Oh, really? Why is he going after that one? I call hacks, man. I call hacks. No way. <laughs> that's gotta be... Uh, oh, that's ridiculous. No one does that.
All right, things pass. <laughs> what a blowout, man. You try to play around it and you instantly get punished. Natty prime time. Hmm. It's a bit scary. A little bit scary. So we need to get to a stage where we can Ugin right. Mm, Acid Moss OP. Do I Chalice on one here to stop Lightning Well? Doesn't seem great. I don't ever see a spot where I can Chalice on two though. I think I just have to go for the Chalice on one and hope it does something. Because I'm literally that far behind. Alright, well there's the lightning bolt. So we'll just get casually smacked in the face for a million damage this turn. And a Steve as well. Trigger City. Pretty sure they're correct sequencing, by the way, is attack with prime time first, do the other effects after, because he missed out on three damage from not having enough mountains then. Uh, it's not going to matter, though. He's got absolute ample damage to kill us. Mattery Shaper. All right, Spatial Contortion, good. Bring it in. Surely Spyglass is just better than Pithing Needle. Information is going to be really important, I think. I'm not really sure what to minus here. Maybe we could look at minusing a land. Like, Blast Zone doesn't seem fantastic in this matchup. Could literally remove two Blast Zone. Guess we can tick one up and make it be a problem. But, like, Scavenger Grounds is definitely going to do nothing. Alright, let's run a 22 land list here. <clears throat> Big, sad Kermit face. I very much agree. Alright, so we have a turn... <clears throat> we have a turn three Thought Knots here. I don't mind that. So we have a turn one, two, and three. Go ahead and keep... We'll lead on the Odrazi Temple in case we draw a second one so we can turn two of Thought Knots here. That'd be pretty OP. Search for tomorrow on Exile. Steve the part. Just draw natural tron every time, easy, yeah. I mean, we got we got a few lands to draw before we hit Natural Tron in this game. I think. Let's uh, let's go for Thought Knots here though, because that's also absolute bullshit. Pirates. <laughs> uh, trust Pirate John to know all about the pirates. 
All right, well, opponent's literally just got land and looking to top deck stuff. He can cycle Sheltered Thicker, and that's about it. I'm actually feeling pretty good about this game after seeing my opponent's hand. All right, we'll fire off a spatial contortion so we can actually deal the damage here. Um, super, like, doesn't do much, but uh, better than nothing. And then we can reshape her, and that's going to give us attacks for seven. So this just allows us to deal damage because uh, spatial contortion is never killing Dried of Lysian Grove or Prime Time. It's literally just for Steve, right? Maybe it's not even worth boarding in. Hmm. All right, Stomping Ground is a new land. We have not seen that one yet. Attacks first in case our opponent kills Matter Reshaper with Lightning Bolt. Now we can play out our Mind Stone and... Look to curve into Ugin next turn. <laughs> Goodbye, Mindstone. You've served us well, my friend. Hardcast Force of Vigor on one target. Opponent plays another Stomping Ground in tapped. <clears throat> I stop on my upkeep all of a sudden. It's got to be Lightning Bot Reshaper, right? There's nothing else. Easy peasy mode, maybe? Question mark. All right, we called the uh, lightning bolt. Top card, battlefield. All right, opponent, you uh. Can't deal a single damage to yourself here. And they concede. Alright, let's go. Good turn. Why didn't you activate stone draw? Um, doesn't it cost two mana to activate stone? I had one mana up, right? Oh no, it costs one mana. Okay. Uh, because I'm a pleb. I'm a scrub pleb, that's why. <laughs> Yeah, I I literally thought it cost two mana to activate. Like I said, first game with the deck. <laughs> first game and 3-1 while playing badly, obviously. Uh, so yeah, it probably says something about the power level of the deck. What do you think about siding out land there, John? Do you think it's right? I think you had two temples or something as well. Okay, well, my bad. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, I just didn't even think. <laughs> Probably lost like half my viewership just there to that uh, silly misplay. <laughs> Alright, looks like we've found our opponent. 
You're not a Tron player? <laughs> That's fine. I still have respect for you then, John. All right, match number five versus Gob F for the win. And, uh, hmm. Thinking about that one out loud. I mean, yeah, we, we have to uh, mulligan this. And uh, we won the Dyro. We're on the play. Now, this is more like it. <laughs> Look at this freaking filth. <laughs> Question is, what do we bottom? I think it's Reality Smasher. I don't think we're ever bottoming Khan the Great Creator, and then we've got a choice between bottoming Thought Not Zero or Reality Smasher. And opponent keeps seven. Guess we're on the play. Reality Smash is aggressive. We're likely to hit a land. I, I guess turn four Smasher is fine. Mine, pass. Although we should be, uh, I guess it doesn't matter. Both these tap for two. <clears throat> What's our opponent got coming our way? A slow turn, that's what's coming our way. So, like, what's a bad hand? <laughs> I wouldn't know with all this crap. Draw a matter reshaper for a perfect curve. That's okay, too. <clears throat> Alright, pass the turn. Oh, is this Esper? So what, they've got two or three mana leaks in the deck normally? Opt. So putting a card on top with the opt there. Alright, it's like literally just Esper. Tron land, Tron land, Tron land. I mean, it's not a Tron land, but like, that's a freaking good card. Is the priority mana at this point? I think the priority is mana. As much as I want to see that card in hand. Okay, we hit land. That's good. Alright, make them have a counter spell. Rippity dip. Sad times. Hmm. I think we tried for great Khan the Great Creator here. I don't really like playing my Smasher straight into a Kaya's Guile. Uh, may maybe I'm playing this whole thing wrong, but... It really feels like he's just been setting up for a not-so Kaya's Guile, and... I'd prefer to lose a different creature, honestly. The one mana removal is pretty weak against us though, because they go for Fatal Push, right? Fatal Push, Eliminate, 
which is a creature or planeswalker CMC two of less. I think Khan's just a big problem for them. Like, if you have the counter spell, you've got to counter this, right? What world is this resolving? Why did that take so long to cast? What the hell? That just makes zero sense. Control decks like lands. Khan seems better than Smasher with Guile, yeah. Okay, I'm glad you agree. Well, we do have a one of Cavern of Souls in the deck. We can Expedition Map into it. And then get our creatures past. Counter magic at the very least. Sure. Matter Reshaper seems like the perfect card to run into. Their stuff. I might want to start taking out Blast Zone to like 3 for their Teferi as well. Or 2 for their um... Or I can just maze my tome, draw a card. That seems better. Go on, pop that Kai's girl opponent. You know you want it. Eldrazi Tron is fun. The Spartan homie, welcome man. How you doing? Yeah, well, this is my first time playing Eldrazi Tron, uh, at least in modern. I did um, playtest a bit of Legacy against my friend years ago. Shrug. Uh, all this dust seems kind of weak here. Trying out some Strixhaven cards in an Abzan win range? Okay, cool. What's the list look like, man? I'd like to see it. One of my, like, good mates used to play, like, a stack of Abzan, and then, um... It just ended up falling way behind the, the power curve that um, the other decks had, right? Alright, let's maze my tome. Like, both Jund and the Black Rain Rock deck just like went way ahead on power. Use Mana Traders or any other similar services? Yeah, I've got like uh, 300 or 400... I think it's 350 Mana Traders subscription. Which, of course, I'm paying for because I'm not that big yet. Alright, let's have a quick gander at this list, Spartan Homie. That resolved. Okay. Dragon's Guard Elite... I uh, see Drino. Hmm. You don't want any more Kai's Gals in your sideboard? Isn't there a bunch of prowess running around? If you're having a problem with prowess as well, um... Then, uh, Deafening Silence is pretty good against them. You got Blight Beetle in there for the Heliod hate, I see, I like that. Plague Engineer is decent, Leyline of Sanctity, is that for the Mirror Match? Is 
You don't love Rhino in the list? What about just Lurus then? What if you remove Rhino and just go for Lurus? Um, ping away this spirit. Path seems questionable in the list. Definitely don't want to tempo your opponent out. How many paths has he got? Three? Yeah. Usually against the prowess decks, you want more fatal pushes than path to exiles. Fatal push is like pretty bad against prowess for most counts. Leyline is against control and prowess. You might run Lurus. Yeah, I think... I think you probably just want Lurus, right? Isn't Thrag 5 mana? Yeah, it is. Um, Alright, so what do we do? We draw a Warping Whale. Uh... I guess we're just looking to up the number of counters on our Walking Ballista during our opponent's turn. I'm not really sure if I like going Reality Smasher into open mana with five cards. You don't have um, any of the black-white man land. Um, is that something you think you might want? I think like one or two copies of the like three mana active black white man land with lifelink could be quite good. Also, if you're running Lurus, you probably want Grim Flayer, right? Other considerations are like Voice of Resurgence, which is pretty decent and in your color pool, but not many other decks. Rhino's beating, honestly, you mean 4-5 Trample never hurts. Opponent goes for the Fatal Push. We hold on to our Warping Whale. Let's put one counter on our Blast Zone. I think it's a pretty good medium. Yeah, Shambling Vent. That's the one that I'm thinking of. You have to yeet some fetches. <laughs> yeah, I think Shambling Vent would be good. Time will go if beat down. Alright, finally we find the Expedition map. I think I want to wait on the expedition map up active so I can have Warping Whale up for the same turn that I go for Smasher. Or is that me just playing too patient? Let's wait for a better spot. No Triome. Actually, yeah, Triome's a good point. You could run the Abzan Triome, uh, which fixes your mana really nicely turn one. Opponent going for Esper Charm here, I'm sure. I wonder when he's going to start attacking our hand. He has double Esper Charm. I'm kind of sad. He's just looking to draw cards. Okay, we're fine. Has Lava Dark gone down in popularity? Is that in the um, red white prowess deck or not? Let's 
get out cabinet cells. Lavada is still a staple in price, okay. Play it on matter reshaper first, then that paves the way for reality smasher as long as the reshaper resolves. I must say, I don't know how good lingering souls is against lava dart. You probably just want like three to four Kai's Guile. I like the split on Abrupt Decay and Assassin's Trophy. You probably value Inquisition over Thoughtseize here, so want to go for, to four Inquisition. Opponent casting something. Maybe. Uh, Alright, well, let's just go ahead and make our opponent have it here, finally. I I've dawdled long enough. Have I tapped enough mana? I guess I'm one short. Alright. Drown in the lock. God, I hate this card. This card is so strong. So darn strong. There's th also the new, like, Kitesail Freak Buddha in Strixhaven colors that I guess you could consider. Um... Get rid of Snapcaster Mage. Alright, apparently I have to tap a million things here. Triomes keep inching up in price, yeah. I think the Triomes are like surprisingly strong. I also think I rushed my last turn. I should have held on the Reshaper. I didn't think of Drowning the Lock, honestly. Counter draw. Oh, you opponent, you've got it. Is there some way that we could, like, abuse a Gifts of Ungiven package in Abzan? Because that would be sweet. Not Gifts, I mean, like, um... Something similar to Gifts Ungiven, but, like, obviously you've got Unburial Rites. Which would be really sweet to abuse with Elish Norn if you... You could, like, Grimflayer big stuff into your own graveyard. It's probably not, like, super amazing, but... It seems kind of okay. Realms Uncharted. Three mana, search your library for up to four cards with different names. Reveal them. An opponent chooses two cards. It's literally on burial rights in green for three mana. That sounds gas. It's a different deck, obviously, but that sounds really good. All right, we'll go ahead and attack our opponent for one. Fortunately, their Esper Charms have just given them a lot of incremental card advantage. Grimflayer was good for fixing your draws since you could dump dead cards in your yard. You could go Grimflayer and Realms Uncharted with Elish Norn and Iona. That would be pretty OP. Imagine against a prowess deck getting like Iona out.
I do not know why it is so difficult for me to cast Dismember on my opponent's creature right now, but I'm really not enjoying that. <laughs> Cool, a card. Let's cast it. Does it resolve, opponent? Counter magic. It's got to be a big rep. Drown in the lock, I'm assuming. Maybe Archmage's Charm. Cryptic Command. Okay, I guess that works too. What set is Realms Uncharted from? That seems nuts. Is that is that another Strixhaven card? From Time Spiral or Eldrazi, Dawn of Eldrazi or some rubbish. I think we pop our Blast Zone for the Snapcaster Mage here. Oh, four different land cards with different names. Okay, so this is just left for lands. Gotcha. It's not the same as what I was thinking. Yeah, I don't think Realms of Unchar the Uncharted is, like, any good, really. It's it's not the gifts we're looking for. <clears throat> you also have access to... It's not that good at the moment, but Containment Priest. 1% Phone Battery Gang. Oh no, John. Find yourself a Charger, man. For the love of all that is sacred and good, uh, definitely find yourself a Charger. I remember um, back when I had my Samsung S5, my biggest accomplishment was screenshotting uh, myself on 0% battery. It's like the best thing ever. You wanted to make an aristocrat's deck because of Yorgmoth. Well, that could work. Yorgmoth is like pretty strong, right? There's also the humans deck that runs like the pyre artifact and then just like tutors up for a combo. <clears throat> or just the Yorg Moth combo deck. Elder Army's cool is a hell of a card if you're running Abzan. You wouldn't run Lurus with it though, right? So attack with our Mattery Shaper. Has opponent got a Snapcast to Chump Block, or are we just getting the damage? Okay, we'll take it. How much land do we even have on the battlefield? We have 12. Plus another 6. It's 18. We have 20 mana. That's so dumb. Not the Castle Vantress for the opponent here. His last one was top bottom. This one is top top. Needless to say, is just like drawing everything you could ever want. That's a nice card. It's a shame I don't have another walking blister I could name Construct on. Yeah, Celestial Colonnade is going to be a beating. What are we revealing off the reshaper? 
I didn't uh, think of the colonnade then. Khan the Great Creator, sure. And then we can follow it up with Walking Ballista when this inevitably gets counted, and then hopefully we do something. Let's play it on 12. So then we get 6 and we play around Mana League. I think playing around Mana League is probably correct here. We've got 15 cards in our graveyard though, so we don't play around Drown and Lock. What? Oh, bugger off. Are you kidding me? Well, I put, put Ballista to zero, actually, because uh, Magic Online just duped me. I swear I played a Ballista earlier on, or a Chalice, doing that same sequence of clicks, and it didn't auto-set to zero. Like, I've got 12 mana floating and no other cards in hand, no cards on the battlefield with actives. What a load of crap. What a pog play, man. <coughs> I feel very salty about that one. <laughs> Is this still game one as well? It's a fairy, hero of Dominaria. Hooray! Punt. <laughs> Punting myself into the dirt. I'll pay that. All right, opponent gets to untap up to five mana here. Reality smash it for the win. Not quite the win. All right, I'm going to concede there. Um, our opponent's played very patiently and well and uh, whatnot. Don't really see a world where we want Dismember here. Relic seems, like, extremely good, though. Um, if we can keep the Kaya's Giles out of their graveyard and also uh, drown in the lock at bay, weaken down their Snapcaster Mages, I'm, like, 100% for all of that. I don't really think we want to just sideboard anything else in randomly. I'm not sure of any sorceries they're actually playing. Maybe Warping Whale's just dead. It's probably not worth just like ramping ourselves or killing a Snapcaster Mage. Mystic Forge? You want me to board in Mystic Forge? Magic the Gathering Online, a game running with duct tape and... Sacrifices to demons. Yeah. Yeah, that's got to be not too far from the truth. <laughs> Alright, whale seems bad. Is Ulla's Dust bad as well? Bought in, like, Tormod's Crypt as well. Um... Or just, like, Sorcerer's Spy Glass for an Aula's Dust. Forge for the Grind, okay. I'll take your word for it, John. Alright, that seems good enough. It's my opponent's record, by the way. He got chatting for a million times. I didn't even pay attention. All right, he's two and one. Seems like he's playing pretty well at the moment. Dust beats Planeswalkers. Yeah, but if they're casting their Planeswalkers, have we already lost? Like, Ugin the Inevitable beats, like, Planeswalkers. Attacking their, their Planeswalkers with a single creature beats Planeswalkers. 
I don't know. It seems kind of kind of average to me. We can actually use all his dust to get rid of their celestial colonnade, though. If they activate to block, we can then make them sack colored permanents, and it's going to be blue and white. It's an interesting mode. Tower, tower, temple. Okay, keep. Just got all that nutso stuff. Let's go. Now I'm trying out Fracture as a sideboard option. Is that Exile an artifact? What's Fracture doing? Average is a good word for how good Dust is in the matchup. <laughs> yeah, I think you might be right. <laughs> So our second temple can actually uh, get a Cavern of Souls to name Eldrazi for us. Seems pretty spicy. We are missing plant. Let's get the plant. Ah, that's the sorcery speed black-white one, right? Yeah, I think that's decent. I think the versatility on it makes it good enough. The entire point of Jund and Abzan is to go one for one, right? <laughs> Do we get punished if we go for Khan the Great Crady here? I don't really think so. I think we just get, a, get to resolve this for free. The question is Rock slash Abzan pulling ahead. Yeah, I think that's reasonably true. You do also have access to Anguish and making it three mana, which exiles, right? Damage to yourself. Um... Just go ahead and get liquid metal coating and then probably play our expedition map. If I counter the map, we can play the liquid metal coating. So we'll sack the map for our Cavern of Souls here. Alright, I think we're pulling pretty far ahead at this point. Yeah, Anguish is definitely underrated. I really like the card. Ah, Snappy Dappy. Why would they counter the map? I don't think that they would, alas. Your ex from four years ago has all the pre-released anguish? Yeah. That card's going to jump eventually, surely. I mean, it's going to have to be after modern slows down, because modern is just ridiculous at the moment. Ridiculously expensive. Cast liquid metal coating. It's 10 bucks at the moment. That's not a bad price. I'm pretty sure I have a few in foil as well. It's all my anguish. <laughs> That's got to be a feels bad. All the anguish of mine. Get out of here. <laughs> I 
All right, well, if our opponent deals with our Khan the Great Creator, we have another one to bring on down. Um, all right. Ten dollar non foil, twelve dollar pre release market price. No one selling for under thirty on TCG. Hmm. I can understand that. Let's go to attacks. If they've got Kai's Gale, they'll make us do it in response. And then we can Khan the Great Creator into Walking Ballista. Walking Ballista is going to put us in a pretty strong spot. Wow, they're letting that resolve. Left in our sideboard that we want to search up. Be you sure it'll change when they shift to etch foiling? What is in they're going to change the way they foil cards now, are they? I hadn't heard of that. Four cards in opponent's hand. <clears throat> Is it a cast effect or an ETB? It's an ETB. Interesting. I think we just plus this so it doesn't die. The reason the non foil tainted pact is worth so much is because it's not available in collector packs. Oh, is the edge foiling the one with the date on it? I don't know. I kind of like the date. Personally, I think I'm like one of the few, but I think a lot of the time the date looks good because it's just like an extra detail on the foil, right? They're going to do so eventually. They want to continue to milk etched foiling. Being for set boosters a little longer, yeah. If it's what I think it is, I don't know why they'd get rid of it. It's like a really good reason to play pre-release. I never updated my stream decker. I'm an absolute peanut. Let's do that now. <laughs> in game five. I might just run back another game with the deck. I think I want to add a second cavern of souls in my for the next leg. Oh, it doesn't want to target me with that effect? That's rude. All right. Hey, that's a good card. Wow, they didn't do anything. Um, okay. Fringe case is the edge foiling has a border outlined in the foil. Okay. Can you link an example of it, John, so I know what you're talking about? It's 
So we can like just walking ballista win, right? If I get rid of Fate, it will push here. Doesn't really affect it. There's nothing that really stops us from doing what we want. If anyone's going to buy into Heliod Company, don't, because the deck is bound to see some cards being banned. Yeah, I definitely agree with you there. X is currently 3, so this time it automatically added mana. Last game it did not. I went for a 1 on 12. Changing too much time on Reddit. What would you guys say if it was, um... If it was... Skyclave Apparition that saw the ban. Would you say that's justified or not really? I'm not sure if that, like, will stop. Uh, it, it's not like a direct nerf to Heliod combo, but... It's like, it makes their interaction worse, like, because then they can't have created tut tutorable, like, answers, pithing needle, suppression field, etc, etc. And creatures. Skyclave isn't the problem in Heliod, yeah. I think it would still be a nerf to the deck if it got removed, though, right? Maybe I want, like, one of my relics in the sideboard so I can actually tutor for it. It seems better than Graph Digger's Cage as a tutor effect. Yeah, whatever. Let's go for that. As a mono white Heliod player, I hope Spike Feeder eats the ban. Yeah, well, I would love to see Spike Feeder get banned. Um, it would actually make them have to play the game instead of just winning the game on turn three ninety percent of the time. <clears throat> it also limits design space. Now, Skyclave is super fair power creep in the format you approve. Okay. Gives spirits a bigger push. Yeah, well, that that's all pretty true. I think it's, like, a little bit annoying in... Death and Taxes, but I guess Death and Taxes is not, like, that powerful of a deck that we're really looking to nerf that out as well. I guess if they get rid of, like, Conclave Mentor uh, plus... plus um, Spike Feeder, it hurts the uh, Green-White Heliod a lot. Um, thanks for the follow nine minutes ago, uh, Alice. Alacusa, I think you were saying. Um, sorry, I, for some reason my sound's not working and I've been too lazy to look into why. Uh, Alright, so we've got like a one lander here which we need a mulligan. We've got like a one lander here we need a mulligan. <laughs> we're down to four minutes on our clock, okay. Maybe we need to play faster. Uh, we'll keep this. Bottom Cage, Bottom Chalice, Chalice is, Ditch the Cavern of Souls, I think, it puts me pretty far away from casting out Khan, I think it's okay, it does kick Bogles in the teeth, yeah. Well, Skyclave does kick Bogles in the teeth. No one's going to argue that. <laughs> Nobody cares about Bogles, though. Like, if they cared about Bogles, they'd be printing cards for us. But they're just not. They, like, refuse to print any aura that's remotely playable um, in modern. 
All right. Well, we just draw the tower and can just get Tron at the end of our opponent's turn. Skyclave is basically Spell Queller, but for things on the battlefield, yeah. Spell Queller is a busted card to you. I think Spell Queller is good, but it only really seems to be good when you're on the play, right? I think on the draw, it's pretty fair. But I guess um, they can also tutor out a turn earlier. Get our mine. Mattery Shaper. I think Chalice on two is here, fine here if our opponent lets uh, Mattery Shaper resolve. They printed all the glitters. Like, dude, I don't even play that in my Bogles deck. See what sort of response this provokes. If all the glitters had like first strike or protection from creatures, like if it had a keyword on there, maybe it's like good enough, but it doesn't even have totem armor on it. It's worse than ethereal armor, but it also allows you to play around um, blast zone and engineered explosives, which are a big issue for bogles. But it has cryptic command mana up as well. In fact, they printed a similar effect as Bonkers. Yeah, well, sort of. Like, it's just also not playable in our format. So, <laughs> it's sort of like maybe okay in Historic, right? It sees a lot of play there. I'd like it to be better than what it was. I tried, like, because I normally run um, two Spirit Mantle in my green white list. Um, and I tried playing all the glitters in its place, and it's just not the same. It's just not even close to being the same. It's a fairy, okay. I think we're going to get to play Alkan the Great Creator here, which is pretty spicy. No, Totem Armor does not bypass sacrifice effects. Thought Knots here seems pretty strong as well. So we can just start with Cavern of Souls on Eldrazi. Into Thought Knots here. If <laughs> Ethereal Armor Toss, yeah, that much at BF Tier 5 deck, I think you might be onto something there. Alright, so we take the Kaya's Guile. They've just got Go to the Throat and Mana Leak left there now. I should take Mana Leak, actually. Uh, that's bad for me. I guess I look to attack Teferi and maybe trigger them casting Go for the Throat. Just resolves. Um, can't just play into Mana Leak. That's fine. Are they going after the Thought Knots here? Yeah, fair play. It is, though. Um, I don't know. I'd say. I'd say Bogles is probably tier two, tier two and a half. It's really not that bad. It's just like all the splash hate from like main deckable cards is pretty obnoxious for us. Attack the Teferi. Teferi can't untap lands if you destroy them. <laughs> if only had a way to destroy his lands. I targets Archmage's Charm as well. That's really frustrating. Reshape a trigger. So, come the great creator to play around this mana lake here. 
He's got like one unknown in hand. It'd be very unfortunate if he could still counter this. Oh wait, that's right. That has flashback. All right, I'm a complete idiot. Uh, yep, yeah. my bad. Pressures of the clock are getting to me. <clears throat> Plus on the Teferi, plays Glacial Fortress. And we start flooding out. Unlucky team. Now coming back to Magic now is something. Last time you ever played Magic was when Uro, Oki, and, and Hogak were legal. Uh, that's kind of disgusting, man. <laughs> Kind of very disgusting. Uh, we're getting like so outvalued by our opponents to fairy here, it's not funny. Oh, freaking hell, a Jason Mind Sculptor as well. Like, we might potentially be able to get there with Reality Smasher just because it has haste. Our opponent is holding Cryptic Command to tap us down, though. Yeah, like, I think for the most part, Modern is pretty diverse. It's a pretty good time to come back. Still waiting for Prime Time to receive a ban? Yeah, well, the problem is they keep putting more and more abilities on lands, so Prime Time keeps getting more and more powerful. And on top of that, they keep giving them ways to get Prime Time out earlier, which seems weird as well. Their legal or is going... Throw a red black phase now and it's best friends with Loras. But it has to like discard and he just doesn't even blink an eye. I didn't really use my mana super efficiently there. Um And we are getting slapped about here. Double ceremonious rejection in hand. Holy cow, how are we ever going to beat that? You think, com you still think companion was a mistake? I mean. It can't be a bigger mistake than Khan the Great Creator. Like, Tudor Cyborg on a Planeswalker is just stupid. And it has an asymmetrical uh, Stony Silence effect. Learn from one of your sisters it was a mistake. <laughs> Did your sister play them into you and then uh, it was like sad times or something? Ah, uh, we lose. Damn. We lose to time. Ceremonious rejection and such. Alright, so we still go 3-2, and I think for the most part it was pretty good. I definitely think we want Cavern of Souls, and I don't really see the reason why we want um, the desert here. So, like, a second Cavern of Souls allows us to potentially cast our Walking Ballistas or our Worm Coil Engine and get them past Counter Magic, because, like, resolving a Walking Ballista there would have been game-changing. Um, opponent came, like, packing the hate, though. I think other than that, maybe we could do with, like, a ratchet bomb in the sideboard, but I don't think that I have it in my collection, so I might just jump into another league without it. Yeah, let's just take, uh, take this into another league. I, I enjoyed that, so we're gonna go again.
So you're going to build Valky Cascade and then Cascade got eradicated? I mean, that was always going to get eradicated, right? But you can still br build Bring to Light and cheat in Valky or the Valky God. Um, asymmetrical equals five syllables. One-sided, three syllables. <laughs> One size, three syllables. A one sided, yeah. Um, I'm not sure what that's referring to. Oh, we found her a match. Whoops. <laughs> Alright. Alright, so here we are for match number one against Carlo Carlos Media. Or Maid Maida. Carlos Maida. And looks like we lost the Dyro. Time for you to play as for told. Uh, man, I hate as for told. <laughs> uh, opponent keeping seven on the play. This is good if like Chalice is good. If not, it's pretty bad. I think we want a Mulligan. It's not what we wanted Mulligan to. This is a bit better, we can keep Ditch Map and Warping Whale and then we can get into it. Wait, just ditch double Warping Whale, leave both maps. Yeah, I like that. <clears throat> As for told, Living End sounds fun. Yeah, it's pretty strong. Lots of cards were reprinted in Time Spiral Remastered outside of lands, it's cheap. Did Asphodel get reprinted? Did not realize that. And this Tarmogoyf is 30 bucks now? Wow. Rip, when I paid like $80 for my Tarmogoyf on the third reprinting. It's just sad. Uh, all of this like just feels awful right now. Just like way behind our opponent. I think we just uh, made my tome into a second map. Yeah, Gemstone Caverns, Flagstones of Trakar, Field of Dead. Um, even though Field of Dead got banned, it got a reprint, right? But even Gemstone Cavern was reprinted, yeah. Yeah, well, Tarmogoyf was also 200 bucks before Fatal Push was printed. Fatal Push is an excellent answer for Tarmogoyf. Alright, so this is the Eldrazi Mirror, actually. Balance, Living End, Gara, Gemstone, all reprinted. Wow. Chalice on one? Okay. Um, sack our map. We'll get a Tron land. Then we can sack our next map as well. So we'll get power plants, play power plant, pass the turn, look to assemble our own Tron mana, like turn and a half after our opponent. Flagstones is so good, yeah. Well, now that they've printed like Elvish Reclaimer and uh, Cleansing Wildfire, it's like very, very good. Not to mention more of those zero mana suspend cards are going to be printed in Modern Horizons 2. Really? I didn't see those rumors. That sounds like pretty bonkers. Opponent is stupidly far ahead here. We've got like a fucking maze mine tome in hand and we just keep drawing mana. And they've got like all this rubbish. We're never winning this game. Oh, now we hit a Tron land. Six turns too late. I 
Are we just dead? We're just dead. Uh, so let's cycle this mine stone. Wait, no, 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 no. I'm stupid. Let's scry and draw and then cycle mine stone. Do we need a thought once here and we can... Reality Smasher on defense. All right, let's scry first. Bottom tower. Blind draw a card. Fucking all our chalices. Good times. <clears throat> Zero mana suspend seems like a terrible plan. Way to go. Respect, suspect not. As limited design space. As for total control. Could be a thing if the rumors are true. Too many rumors from too many people. <laughs> Don't make specs off rumors. I mean, people always say buy the buy the rumor, sell the news, right? But people could just be trying to pump up the price of other cards to shift them. Uh, I'm not really sure what we want to bring in in this matchup. Spatial contortion, maybe. I think warping whale doesn't really do anything. All is dust doesn't do anything at all. I'm not sure if there's a word where we want to like sorcerer spyglass an effect that we might potentially have. Um, maybe like a pithing needle and a relic and then we can just like cycle the relic or maybe two relics and just cycle them. Really think the other effects are pretty weak. So many people want to see Hex Drinker reprinted. I don't really think Hex Drinker is really even good enough for modern. Like some decks are playing it at the moment, but it still doesn't make it great. We're going to keep this hand. Turn 2 Thought Not Sir is fantastic. Yeah, I still don't see the hype on Hex Drinker. It's just like super clunky. It's like a 2 1 you need to invest way too much mana into. Yeah, Spartan Homie agrees. Ah, opponent also uh, with a relic here. He who thought not Sears first wins, right? Opponent's hand sucks. Let's get rid of the matter reshaper. Curve him out, right? Or do we even care about matter reshaper? The only thing they can do next turn, and next turn we can play our own matter reshaper, which isn't great, and then their turn three. Hmm. Tower, tower, plant. Hmm. So it doesn't have Tron. It's just got to be calm, the great creator, right? I don't know. Spice it. Uh, Spun Homer, you're curious to see if there's going to be more tribal support in Modern Horizons too? You want... Yeah, Zombie Trial would be sweet, and actual tribal support would be good. Like, they printed something for Slivers and Glass Pool Mimic, and that was about it, right? Um, there was actually more tribal hate. Nikaju did a video on it. There was, like, more tribal hate than what there was tribal support in the most recent set. The opponent plays the Power Plant... And cracks the relic. Uh, Alright, we'll attack with Thought Knots here. Maybe I rushed my Thought Knots here one turn too early. And I could have matter reshaped. Cordial Vampire was good support for vampires. Cordial Vampire is insane. <laughs> Uh, 
I'm going to play as a second tower and then leaves up all of this. Um, do I even play Khan the Great Creator into just like removal? I guess I can get Worm Coil Engine, which would be pretty good here, or Walking Ballista. We've already got our opponent on the ropes. Can I do anything else? Can also get in Snaring Bridge. Doesn't like hugely help us at the moment. Does this thing have flying? This thing does have flying. So we could look to kill with Sovereign Flagship next turn. I think that's reasonable. Okay, I just skipped in my end step. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Okay, never mind. <clears throat> Big misplay number two. In my sixth game here. Ten mana for my opponent. Uh, Smasher plus Mattery Shaper, I suppose. A double Smasher! Yikes, man. Dude, we're getting gamed. On a roll with the misclicks? Yeah, you know it, man. You really want to build Esper Zombies when Armor Cat was released, but even with two good zombies and black white, still doesn't do enough. Yeah, Armor Cat was supposed to, like, it was just zombie themed, wasn't it? Enters deal three will die. Do we need ensnaring bridge here? I think we might need ensnaring bridge. Just to stop our opponent. I can wing a land into playoff matter reshaper potentially if I'm willing to just give it up for free here. Potentially we have good blocks as well though. Alright, let's pass. Esper Zombies is a thing. It's called Refurbished into God Fairy's Gift. Oh, what else is going? Worm Coil Engine? Yeah, I guess you're right. I'll ask. <clears throat> Uh, I think I ever thought that Worm Coil Engine would have made sense. Do I want to cycle Matter Reshaper? Or is that just bad use? It's probably a bad use of Reshaper, considering we might want to attack with it before playing Bridge or something. Relic right on time. Saving Khan is not an option. No, it's not. Not after my uh, silly plays. So, 
attacks. Might be able to just find a walking ballista and finish our opponent off after we put some damage through here. Trades. Hmm. Interesting. Free expedition map for the opponent. I guess our opponent can tick Expedition Map up to, uh, like, Blast Zone up to three here. And then destroy the Ensnaring Bridge and essentially kill us. Um, so yeah, Bridge was, like, just a stu super stupid play. A stupid, stupid card to um, tutor for. I'm only getting second blast zone. Draw end of turn, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Please. Pile Sears also. Is that just like please something? Reshape a trigger. Battlefield. We can actually tick up our Blast Zone and destroy both Reality Smashers. It's probably better than the Cycling Relic, right? Maybe not. I guess not. That plays out there. Other Blast Zone. Matter Reshaper. Jesus, man. I will not let up. This one time. Dismember. I don't think any of this is going to cut it. Pretty sure Ballista is a construct. Is right. I don't think it really matters anyway, but uh, where's our Ballista? Yeah, construct. Okay. Can not really do anything here. Um, cool. But well, we're super dead. Yeah, well, I the problem was I don't actually have Tron Mana here. So I couldn't I couldn't tick up for enough to kill Reality Smasher. I could only put one counter down. And even then, like it was double plant, I could only put two down at the most. Like Smasher uh, just got us there. We we definitely misplayed the um, Khan though. We should have got Worm Coil Engine. That would have made a big difference. A huge difference. So, right on me. Blister is a con man. Can confirm. What do you mean, John? <laughs> Super confused. Mm -mm -mm. All right, there's your problem. You should have Tron Mana. Yeah, why didn't I think of that? That's a very good point. If only I was as fortunate as my opponent to just like have Tron Mana. <laughs> I mean, I was pretty fortunate last league with my Tron Mana, I won't lie. Mm -mm. The mirror match kind of feels baddish. It's weird. All right, match number two. I lost the die roll. Versing Airing. Airing is going to be on the play. I 
Oh, the good old 24 land deck with a no land a hand. Beautiful. Opponent keeping seven. Uh, we see Tron land. Chalice on one against a Lurus deck. Yes, please. We ditch one con. It's got to be like Clever Lumomancer if they're playing Bauble before a creature. Or it's John Shadow and they've got a Thought Seize. They target themselves. Alright. Here comes Lumomats. Ooh. What? So, like, the dream here is Chalice on 1 plus Chalice on 2, right? Opponent not yielding to his own Mish's bobble trigger right now. Big rip. Uh, we find Walking Blister. That's got to be okay. I want to see that second Tron line, though. Can my opponent's deck even beat Ensnaring Bridge? If I empty my hand and then go Khan Ensnaring Bridge, what can they do? Tron land? That's not a Tron land. So I'll play our Maze Mind Tome. Cracking Expedition map right now is not the best value. Unearth is cycled, so it is a prowess deck. It's Grix's prowess then. I wouldn't be surprised if he just lure us to hand in this spot. Fucking power plant is the wrong land, man. This is bullshit. I think it's still better than breaking on land drop. <laughs> uh, what a disappointment. And we've got to discard a card as well. Dismember seems like a dis decent card to discard here. I think. Seems like a very odd mode for the Colligan's command there. Surely you guys off to map. All right, Chalice on one pass. Also, yeah, like he could just lure us to hand there and hold the Colligan's command for later on. I wasn't threatening anything with Maze Mind Tome. Is Maze Mind Tome that OP that people actually want to do that? Okie dokie, this is taking a while to resolve. <laughs> Sprite Dragon, so it is prowess. The Chalice on one is fine. But it's Grixis prowess. And the Misha's bubble comes on down. Let's go. Land. Dismember. Yeah. 
Guess we got a tower. Because I need to make my land drop here. And do I go for the kill before he like untaps? I think so. There's like too much risk that my opponent has like drown unlock or something and just counters it. So I think this is fine. Did I just like search out my tower and not play it last turn? What am I doing? Literally does not matter. Um, <laughs> Blister on two is sort of bad against Sprite Dragon. All right, let's uh, just calm. Has he got main deck counter magic? That is the big question. Playing straight into Drown and Lock here. I'm an abs absolute pelican tonight. I don't know what I'm doing. Grixis Dragons. Ooh, we've got a deck for uh, Spartan Homie. Maybe he's got some copies of your uh, dragon form in there. Like... <laughs> the 20 copies of that dragon sorcery. <laughs> Cryptic command. Bounce. Counter. Okay. I think that just means we're dead. Let's see that gold spawn dragon at the top end. They can't have gold spawn dragon. They've got Lurus as a companion. Um, You can't really see it unless I go like that. But yeah, they've got Lurus as a companion. Cool. Well, uh, our opponent like literally just got to go off for free and we didn't get to interact at all or even get our mana. Uh, so that's a big sad face there. Uh, Spatial Contortion seems good here, though. We probably want to bring in some sort of graveyard hate as well. I would assume... Dismember just seems like a very dangerous card in this matchup. I'm not sure if we want it or not. <clears throat> I think Ugin's probably pretty bad here. It I don't know, it does sort of answer a creature. It's pretty slow though. I don't really like Dismember. Relic is maybe greedy. All right, I'm gonna submit that and BRB guys. I'm just gonna shoot to the toilet quickly. Uh, just do the polite thing and tell our opponent. And while we're doing this, I'm just gonna run an ad so that people that join don't get pre-rolls. Alright, sorry about that guys. Uh, we are back now. Alright, so we'll be on the play. Opponent can choose their companion and etc. So yeah, Grixis Prowess, you just wanna You just hit us with an ad, yeah, Soz man. Better than staring at like an empty chair, right? 
Sound seems amazing. Let's keep. Turn one map into turn three Tron. <laughs> Hide from those scary ads. Oh wait, we don't actually have Tron. We have Double Mine. They had different borders and artwork, so I assumed they were different Tron lands. Fucking perks of renting with mana traders is you don't get given like a playset from the same set. Still, so, like, we can channel someone here, which is fine. Thoughtsies. He's gotta take the chalice, right? Maybe I. Maybe it takes Maze Mind Tome, actually. Hmm. Yeah, he takes the Maze Mind Tome. I think that's reasonable in that spot. Uh, we draw Spatial Contortion. I like Chalice on one, though. All right, put it in us with that sprite dragon. Let's go. While he's tapped out, um, we break on a land drop as well. What a load of crap! <laughs> hit another card, the Great Creator, before we hit our second, our third land. Fun times. <laughs> Alright, let's go for that Spatial Contortion. I'm going to see what he does. That just resolves as well. Alright, if we could ever hit our third mana, that would be amazing. Usually you'd get rewarded by holding map there, but we're just getting like put further and further behind right now. We're lucky that Chalice is very good here, but like, if our opponent has like Colligan's Command, obviously we're in trouble. Lurus to hand, I'd like to say I'm surprised. With the amount of time we gave him, it like makes complete sense. We can thought not sear away the Lurus though, so I guess that's our line. Ah, now we hit the Tron line. Lol. Oh, we literally hit his whole hand. Thought Scour, Lightning Bolt, and Prismatic Vista. I'll uh, put it here so you can all see it. Alright, big attacks now with our Thought Knots here. I think we're just calling the great creator, get liquid metal coating, start stripping his lands. And that should be pretty good from there. Just do it to fetch a land. Yeah, well, we, we got there eventually. I think you're uh, watching it a bit of a delay. How do they beat Worm Coil Engine? They probably don't. Skyship also seems really good. Am I just overthinking this though? No, I think Skyship's a decent cold. Ah, oh, we'll get Worm Coil. I can't make my mind up. Ah, oh, Snapcaster Mage into Archmage's Charm. That was a pretty good draw for our opponent for their turn. 
Now they're going to see two fresh turns and then another one. Get Ballista. Okay, sorry. I saw that a bit late, man. We're close to casting this, um, but I guess it doesn't really excuse playing badly. Did they hit Colligan's command just then? Not yet. Okay. All right, there goes the uh, cleansing wildfire. Let's uh, get a land. Man, Ballista would look pretty good right about now, right? <laughs> Thought Scour uh, getting the countered by the Chalice of the Void. So they're going to attack the Khan out, kill the Khan. No attacks with Snapcaster Mage. Interesting. So we now hit the map. Oh yeah, right. Okay, my bad. <laughs> I literally roast every Eldrazi Tron player that does that ever, every time they do it. And then, um, well, that's kind of nice, but we can't cast it. Can't really attack here. All right, I'll get. I guess we'll get uh, Ballista this time, which we probably should have done last time. Walking Ballista to hand, so we can cast that next turn for at least two, maybe for three. Opponent concedes. Cool. All right, I kind of like Graveyard Hate a little bit more now. We have to be a little bit worried about turn one thought seize too. Is dismember better on the draw maybe? Maybe Ugin is fine. All this dust seems semi reasonable. Minus, yeah. I minus out the Mind Stone, and then I think I remove... I already removed that. I removed Tectonic Edge. It shouldn't really play that much of a role here. Sure, this has got to be a keep. Potentially slow, potentially disruptible, whatever. We're like a Tron deck with something to do at two, three, at, at three, four, and five mana, like. And seven mana now as well. Might, like, just play around the Cleansing Wildfire for a turn by playing the map here. Is my opponent going to counter this with Spell Pierce? Thought Scour target us. Yeah, I I'm smelling a Dran on the lock if he's targeting us. Fucking knew it. I fucking knew it. Alright, sweet. At least we had one more waste. All 
All right, let's uh, see if we can hit that land drop next turn. Well, rip. Multiple cleansing wildfires before they even play a creature. What the hell, man? All right, well, we draw a land, so that's nice. I guess we just get Eldrazi land here because it has excellent synergy with literally our entire hand. Fucking another cleansing wildfire? Grixis mono cleansing wildfire. <laughs> Alright, he can't possibly have the fourth one, right? Although he's probably at Snapcaster Realm by now. Called it on the drain and the lock. Fuck off, man. Just let me play. What a joke. Legit. Legit strategy. Eight wildfires and no creatures. Just transition sideboard. <clears throat> I think I'll second Chalice on one. There's potential to Chalice on zero for Misha's Bobble, but that's, like, not that many cards. I guess... Uh, no, actually, it's probably correct to Misha's Bobble for zero because they've got a Lurus. And they can get back Misha's Bobble. Second round and lock. Show me your hand, opponent. Fuck off. We're literally drawing our entire top end right now. Uh, big pog play right now. So what we get for uh, for removing that tectonic edge, people. This is what we get. Crazy, absolutely crazy stuff. My opponent disconnected. <laughs> and just as he's about to win, he disconnects. Alright. Righto. Well, that makes for interesting gameplay. Oh, he's rejoined. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right, well, we're just going to get out of this one into the next game because we drew our entire top end and got hit by, what, three, four land destruction effects? <clears throat> we had two chalices and one mattery shaper, and that were our, those were our only cards of low mana cost there. I guess we had one map, but... Eh. So yeah, I guess um, I guess we can mulligan a bit more aggressively than what we did there. I'm not sure how much it helps us against a hand like that though, but it's the way when you're like flooded on lands, you continue to be flooded. When you're um, screwed on lands, you continue to be screwed. Just what? It's just part of magic. Which is why. Wizards should have done Zendikar Rising correctly and made 
man land slot into every deck archetype at a significantly lowered power level so we can reduce the variance and so people can actually just play a game of magic nobody wants stupidly overpowered crap if it, you could just fix the game uh well this is like fine if we draw stuff so and we got a maze mind time i think we could Because my opponent is currently 1-3, and we're currently 0-2. Yikes. When did that happen? I'm going to go out on a limb here and Chalice on 0, in case there are a Misha's Bobble deck. I think it's okay. They are not a Misha's Bobble deck. Amulet of Vigor. This is not going to be fun. So Lesnia Sanctuary and my opponent can play their Dryad of Lysian Grove. Search your library for a basic land card. Put that onto the battlefield. Tapped. Learn? Oh dear god. This deck doesn't get a learn deck. Learn mechanic does it. Look at the top six cards of your library. You may reveal a creature among them. Put that into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom in a random order. You gain three life. That is absolutely disgusting. When did Ambulate need help? This is so wrong. Can I play like Chalice on 2 and it doesn't accomplish anything, I don't think. Is it 3? That's a sorcery, we can counter it with Warping Whale. At least Chalice on 0 is going to stop Summoner's Pact, so that's something. When it comes up with the explore into growth chamber, it's the uh, land that keeps on giving here. Sakian Amulet of Vigor. All right, we'll sack that one. We find the power plant. Go team. We find the reality smasher. Double go team. Alright. We'll play out our smasher. We will attack. Uh, I'll leave up Dismember. I don't like casting Chalice on two here. Field trip. Okay, what other crap are you learning? I'm sure he doesn't have just one field trip. Mm. Lesson. Create a 2-1 white-black inkling creature with flying. Create a 3-2 red-white spirit token. Create a 4-4 red-blue elemental token. What's the matchup? Had to drive to work. Chalice on zero matchup. It's Amulet Titan, but they're playing with lessons. So they've got like Field Trip, which gives them lessons, and then they've got like all this crap.
Perfect. I mean, all of a sudden it feels like really fair to play all this dust, right? It totally does not. <laughs> what a ridiculous card. All right, we can go ahead and attack for five. Then we can look to use Tron Mana to Chalice on three. This is Chalice on four. Three is there. Oh, that's four. Hmm. What am I doing? I can't count. All right, chalice on three. And then chalice on six next turn. Um, Opponent concedes. Cool. Sure. Amulet Titan. Anything in here? Do anything in that matchup? I don't think so. Spatial Contortion doesn't really do much. Is it literally just to run it back? I think it's a run it back. All right, well, let's hope to hit Tron Manor and all is dust. Because that shit's broken. We have double map, all is dust, Mindstorm, Warping Whale. <laughs> I don't think we can keep this, but it's mighty tempting. It's Mulligan, like we could also see a hand with Chalice of the Void, which would be nice. So now we have one Tron land, no ways to find Tron lands. All right, Mulligan again. Keep. Blast Zone seems reasonable. Drop all wastes, and that should be okay. All right, we'll play mine and pass. Probably going to Chalice on zero, but I can hold it for a turn or two so we don't get blown out by like a Force of Vigor. Never really understood Explorer in these decks. Is it just so they can play a 56-card deck? Is that why it's in there? Because it doesn't gain the mana. It just, like, goes neutral in mana. It's It always seems so odd to me. <clears throat> Eldrazi Temple. Uh, yep. Yeah. Looks good. I guess we can hold on to Chalice. Our opponent's not really threatening anything too much. We can Thought Not see a next turn, strip away like a Force of Vigor before we play the Chalice. <clears throat> Alright, let's see how nuts their hand is.
Here comes the Boreal Grazer, so they're going to net an extra mana here. What are they bouncing this time? Another Arboreal Grazer. Alright, they're now at enough mana for prime time, but they're one green short. Ghost Quarter themselves, oh lol. <laughs> Fair play. Did we just get, like, completely screwed by not playing Chalice on zero? No, he didn't summon his pact. Fuck. <laughs> Vigilance haste. Uh, uh oh. He probably has the double strike uh, land in his deck as well. <clears throat> so if we could like hit and play all his dust all in one turn, that would be amazing. But we're obviously mana short on that. Do I block with Reshaper just to try and hit land? I mean, I think that's reasonable. We're like extremely far behind here. I'm gonna go for it, even though we could double block with Thought Knots here next turn. The game's probably over next turn. Unless we do something very significant. So we hit the power plant. Right. Dried of Lysian Grove, I'm assuming. Field trip. Oh, look at these chalices. They are good. They are not good. Uh, I guess we can go for some information here at the very least. Okay, our opponent's actually out of stuff. We play our chalice on zero, that's pretty good. <clears throat> so wait, did we not take anything with Thought Knots here? No, that's exiled, okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. So I guess we'll take the damage this turn, look to somehow kill it next turn, maybe. Block it out next turn. Hey, look, a pact, yeah. <laughs> ah, yep, here comes the uh, double strike. Chuck, slow rolled the double strike. Can he double strike? Yeah, he can both double strike and give plus two. We'll make him tap it correctly, though. It's uh, probably not hard to do, though. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. Wait, wait. What? He's not... He's not going for this? Opponent? <laughs> Jeez, I almost had a heart attack on my opponent's behalf, then. <laughs> What's our next card? A tower. So that would have actually been Tron Manor. We just had nothing to do with the Tron Manor. Okay. I mean, surely, like, can't the great creator hands have got to be reasonable? Or anything with Thought Knots here? I like being on the play here. Fucking, what is this? Garbage Shevin, get the hell out of here, man. Uh, 
And we see this rubbish as well. Yeah, let's just throw this too. We're down to five. Keep. Waste of time. All right, so we'll ditch the mine. We'll ditch the waste, I think. Keep double map on Tron Mana. All right, I'm glad I made the right decision, Alaska. Boreal Grazer on the turn one. Talaria West into play. Hmm. Hit another power plant, so we have lots of mana this game. We just need to find the action now. Another field trip. Environmental Sciences, search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, shuffle your library, you gain two life. Alright. Mine, plant, we need tower. Play our tower. Play our reshaper. Play our map. Pass the turn, lose the mana. It's fine. So now we can go for Blast Zone as well, if we think we need it, sure. Another field trap. Seems weird. But obviously, like, he gets a ramp spell and an extra effect, so card advantage-wise, what he's doing is pretty strong. Another matter shaper. We can like slowly tick our blast zone up to six and our opponent will probably have a pretty hard time to win after that. I guess we can initially um, tick it up to three and then if we need to put another three counters on it, we can maybe do it in an end step or something. <clears throat> Use it to block. Is in my matter reshaper. Imagine blocking though. Mmm. Mmm. Imagine prime time though. Do we have to like double block next turn? I'm starting to get actually quite terrified here. Ghost quarter? Are you kidding me, man? Ugh. Cool. Well, I'll just keep running out these things. Wait, what? Uh, huh. He doesn't currently have access to red mana, so he can't or white mana, so he can't give double strike without Chalice of the Void. Do I want to put like 
one counter on my blast zone in response. Imagine not blowing up Blast Zone. Yeah, it seems weird. I'm going to put a counter on Blast Zone because I think it's our way to answer this Primeval Titan. I guess I could have put one more counter on out. I could have loaded up the counters actually because I have a Drazi temple in hand. Alright, I'm an idiot. I keep doing really stupid stuff. Watch him play Ren and Six next turn? Yeah, probably. I mean, he doesn't have red mana yet and none of his red mana comes in untapped, but he'll probably have it. <laughs> oh, whoop, there's the amulet of Vigor. Never mind, opponent just wins. Was he just like slow rolling that the whole time or did he literally just ass it off the top? Double prime time. Double the fun chat. Double the fun. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> I think we're in trouble people. And a Dryad of Elysian Grove. Are we going to lose all our matter reshapers but get like a million things? Ooh, that is a lot of damage. Alright, we'll let Magic Online do the uh, counting for us because why would we bother? <laughs> That's like 15 damage. Plus the prime times. Uh, they have like fetch to deal another 9 damage to us. Yeah, sure. Cool. Hard game. Hard life. Uh, Alright. <laughs> We're getting spanked, people. <laughs> Well, the first league seems so good, and then this league, we just, like, after misplaying a lot in the first two games, and then whatever the hell that game three was against Amulet Titan. What do we even do against Amulet Titan? It's... If we don't have Tron Mana and hit Khan the Great Creator to strip away these amulets... I mean, we even were, like, playing our Chalices on Zero as well. Well, we gave our opponent their 50 play points, so that's some pretty good charity. Maybe some karma comes back around to us now or something. <clears throat> Dismembering the Titan into a 1-1 one -one sounds good, yeah. Imagine drawing Dismember. <laughs> <laughs> Can I dismember Valakut as well? I'd like to dismember Valakut. Alright, here we are. Match number four versus Phil Online. Phil Online winning the dice roll with his magical six die roll. <clears throat> We're like one land off Tron. I think Tron players normally keep this. Maybe this is greedy, but... We're also a Drazi Tron, not like regular Green Tron. <coughs> Noble Hierarch, is this Infect? I smell Infect. This is like a really awful hand against Infect. Alright, pass. See what happens. Spirits? It is spirits. Interesting. So we get hit for that one juicy point of damage. You know, like hitting all, all his dust would just be amazing. We find Khan the Great Creator, which is also pretty good. Uh, 
I really hope we draw Tron Manor, and then we can Ugin into Minus. Is that good? Ugin into Minus and cast Matter Reshaper. Not bad. I think I'm supposed to play out the uh, matter reshaper here into the spell queller. Just give it to them um, because we have like better stuff in hand, like Khan the Great Creator, that we'd really like to resolve. It is also a little bit frustrating because they have Skyclave Apparition for Bridge, though. So if we had, like, Torpor Orb, that would obviously be very good in this matchup, but we do not have Torpor Orb. Uh, it's like, it's all or dust is or bust, really, I think. Fuck. <laughs> Uh-huh. Casually take 12 damage. No way to, like, hit land and draw all this dust. Um, right. Plant, plant, mine, mine. Mic? What's wrong with my mic? I literally have the thing working on my end. Mm. I guess I didn't need to show that I was Eldrazi then. That was stupid. I'm not really sure there's anything in our sideboard I want, but then again, I'm not sure we really want Warping Whale. Relic could just be better. Maybe I'm undervaluing the mode where I make a um, Scion. We do want Spatial Contortion, actually. Now that I've just stared at my uh, sideboard for a million years. We can Warping Whale, we're on the play, we can Warping Whale their um, Noble Hierarch, which is fine. You're getting slapped? Yeah, slapped for a home run, man. <laughs> Fucking not even close. Ugin seems like maybe a little bit slow. I think I can probably minus Tectonic Edge as well. <clears throat> Keep every day of the week. We have a turn one, a turn two, and two turn threes. Plus Blast Zone interaction. Lead on the temple. This is probably going to look really weird, but I'm doing it anyway. Don't need to go get tempoed out of this game, so... Opponent's going to have a lot of trouble spell quellering a Thought Knots here too. Just plays a Supreme Phantom. That is fine. Alright, this is more like it. Let's go. Cool, uh, triple Thought Knots here. 
You love to see it. Uh, <laughs> Skyclave apparition, eh? Bolt the bird. Pretty much. We'll dismember the hierarch. It's it's not quite a bolt the bird. Mausoleum Wanderer, sure thing. I think I'm fine trading this for two creatures, and then we get to thought so not see the next card out of his hand. What's that? You want a drug scale captain? I don't think so. Alright, so pretty much just a moorland haunt in our opponent's hand. Can get back two creatures and like slowly get our opponent back into the game, unfortunately. <clears throat> We can also, like, just active Blast Zone and get rid of more creatures. Mm. I guess the way we did that, we held up a Blast Zone active on one, so we could, like, trade the Blast Zone and the Thought Not Seer for both his creatures without losing our Thought Not Seer. Alright, they are attacking in the air. Moorland Haunt is tapped and looks like they're going for like collected company. No. Spirit token. Sure. Do I just can't walking ballista to hand here? I don't think he can beat that. Could get liquid metal coating and be tricky. That doesn't seem great. Surely I just walking ballista or sovereign council flagship. Alright, pass the turn. We'll use our Thought Knots here to protect our Ballista. If we need to. Burnet concedes. Alright, so that time we got to do the slapping. GG chat. Um, All on Haunt was like semi annoying then, but I don't think it's like super horrible. We might want Pithing Needle for Aether Vial, actually. If we interrupt their tempo with it, it's pretty good. It also hits Moorland Haunt. Let's remove a Warping Well. Mic issues again, am I playing on the laptop? Um, no, I'm playing on my computer. Let me check the settings. Um. I think I'm on a 30s mobile delay despite using lower latency. Yeah, 30 second mobile delay. I might have to, I'm like in Australia and our internet's really awful. Currently, I've got a 4,000 bit rate, so it shouldn't be too bad. But over the course of the stream, it's been dipping to probably like 1,000 at points. So it's probably just delayed us a lot.
Uh, I might have to look into doing something to fixing that, like getting rid of some of these dynamics. I think they take up a lot of bandwidth. All right, so. Seems reasonable um, on the draw, I think. If they turn one Aether Vial, we're like very, very happy. No Aether Vial from my opponent. Alright, we'll play out our map. Hopefully it doesn't get spell pierced. It does not yet. Not this time. Selfless spirit, sure. Another good argument for this pithing needle. Uh, so power plant, fantastic draw. We're gonna have Khan Manor up next turn. Uh, it's plugged in correctly. It should be okay mostly. Maybe I'm like just talking too quiet at times or too loud. Get our tower. We find Seagate wreckage, that's interesting. I think I'm willing to lose a mana here. All right, we'll name Selfless Spirit. Should be mostly fun. We just have to watch the VODs later. Yeah. Could be an idea, John. It really could be. I did um, recently update my setup. I uh, got a new CPU, uh, motherboard, and RAM. My graphics card's the same. My PSU is the same. Uh, but I did update stuff, which is kind of nice. Uh, I should have um, activated the Maze Mind Tome there. I'm a donkey again. I'm uh, trying my best to lose. We do have enough mana to just play out two Khan the Great Creators. If the first one gets counted, we can play the second one. Let's go for that. Mm, I watched a clip and the audio was there. Might just be my internet. Yeah, my Australian internet is pretty awful, dude. I, I've literally got Ethernet cable connection. I'll, I'll have to um, play around with it a little bit. I'll, I'll uh, get rid of some of these graphics and see if that helps. So the question is, we're going to be attacked for a minimum of 5 next turn, which puts us to 9. We could potentially be getting attacked to 6. I think we just get Ballista. Maybe Sovereign Flagship? Actually, Sovereign seems decent. Uh, let's just get the bridge. It's bad against Skyclave Apparition, though.
It's weird that the, like, audio is messing up on you, though, because audio uses, like, stuff all bandwidth compared to the video. He chooses to kill the calm. Guess that makes sense. Uh, we'll go ahead and scry. Top the heck out of that walking ballista. Let's go. All right, I'll try for ensnaring bridge. See what response that provokes. They've probably got another Supreme Phantom. No. Uh, do I just like blister on zero here? I want to tick up my blast zone, which is going to require. I want to tick it up twice, so I need to tap both these lands to tick it up. I don't really disable attacks. I guess we're just Ballista uh, for three. And then we can shoot down a Spell Queller, get another Khan back, and life is good. They shouldn't be able to counter this. It CMC should be equal to six currently, I think. Collected company. Yeah, that's a good time to cast Coco. I respect that. Drog Skull Captain Spell Queller. Well, you know what? We're gonna make it so our opponent's creatures can't attack off that Drog Skull Captain, and then we can shoot out, shoot it down. I think we have a good lock here. Fine. <clears throat> wow, another drug skull captain, eh? All right, so we kill that one. He still can't attack with anything. We have time to tick up Blast Zone, potentially. We can Sovereign... Can't into Sovereign Skyship, right? We've got seven, eight, nine, ten mana. Is there anything else we want in our sideboard? Maybe like liquid metal coating. Why do you let the blister die? Uh, he cast a second drug skull captain. So to avoid him getting like full on hex proof. It's my kill condition. I've got these in hand, man. Feel like Skyclave apparitions. Right? Like... It's got to be right. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, all right, so we need six mana to up these. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, which means we'd have three mana to spend. I think we just pass and look to blow up the whole board. Uh, I guess we just empty our entire hand, actually. So he cannot attack with his army? Yeah, well. He cannot attack with his army currently. Mm-mm. <clears throat> 
We're still like dodging Skyclave Apparition. That will just like end the game. Give him the win. Skyclave Apparition will just destroy Bridge though. We still want to like keep his board semi in check, right? All right, minus Khan. We can attack his Texas white source here with liquid metal coating. Actually, that seems pretty decent. Although, wait, he's got Noble Hierarch. Now that's stupid. All right, I chose wrong. I can exile the Noble Hierarch though. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I guess this is fine actually. This we activate Maze Mind Tome, draw a card. We draw a dismember. I guess that can stay in hand. Tick up, add pig every tutor for two. Killing spell queller gives you Khan refresh. Yeah, that's true, Pirate John. I'm not sure we need it. Uh, it currently has hexproof as well. Wait, what just happened? Oh, wait, I just blew up Blast Zone. I'm a fucking peanut. Oh, my God. I am a fucking peanut. I clicked the wrong ability. All right, and I didn't even liquid metal coating his land. Okay, I need to go to bed after this one. Jesus, dude. All right. Good job. Good job. Gain some life, do some stuff, more land to hand. Oof, the clicks, yeah. My mistake, man, my mistake. I can start taxing him out now, though, with the liquid metal coating. Uh, so liquid metal on Hallowed Fountain. Khan Plus. Okay. <clears throat> I guess he can Mortland Haunt here or something that he's worried about doing. Tick up, ping, every two to four. As in, you want me to tick up and ping with liquid metal coating? Is that what you're talking about, Alaska? Feels like he's got a cocoa. It's like, so curious why I couldn't name X here. Path his own creature. Do I dismember his creature in response? <laughs> um, yeah, let's dismember it in response. Let's let's keep him locked out. Target creature, this one. What is going on? Target creature. Why can't I target my opponent's creature? If 
Path to Exile is on this. Oh, it's got Hexproof. I'm a fucking dingus. Yep. With Ballista, you reckon? Oh, you're talking about if I kept it? Yeah, right. Suppose you have a fair point. I can get one with this Khan the Great Creator. I should have one in the sideboard still. Yeah, here's one in the sideboard. Just rips the Coco. Rip. Rippity dip. Does he hit Skyclave Apparition finally? He's dug through a fair amount of his deck, so I wouldn't be surprised. There it is. Alright, that's game. Yeah, so I guess I just misplayed this at like every possible turn. I should... I should literally have my Blast Zone on three right now, and I should have had all of these three drops blown up. And then I only get attacked for... What, four? Fucking Blast Zone, man. <laughs> All right, well, I completely ruined that first leg with that second leg. That's just embarrassing. Um, all right, well, I'm just going to donate a uh, win here now to whoever we randomly verse, and then um, I'm going to jump off the stream after that. So, yeah, thank you, everyone, for joining. I really appreciate having you here. Um Sorry I uh, made you cringe so much, Alaska, with my newbiness and my uh, lack of being awake. But yeah, I, I hope the uh, first leg made up for it a little bit, maybe. The first leg went relatively well. Maybe next time. I, I still stand by Khan the Great Creator just being stupid. Uses Selfless Spirit. Um, no, I had Pithing Needle naming Selfless Spirit. I named Selfless Spirit with my Pithing Needle, so he couldn't do that. Thanks for joining, Pirate John. Good to see you as well, man. <clears throat> and I can also Blast Zone in response to the Collected Company as well before anything hits the battlefield. I'm 4 GG. <laughs> Alright, so we'll just gift that one. Alright, league over. Uh, that's got to be my worst league in a while. Uh, obviously we donated it. If we played the deck a bit tighter, we probably would have got better results. Um... Yeah, but it, it is what it is. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining. Uh, have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time. Cheers.